In the deep ditch of history, in the darkness of the soil, there are countless famous cultural relics shouting, it's so dark here, it's so cold here, come and save me, let me see the light again. It's a pity that these treasures were buried so deeply that people could not hear their cries. One by one, the treasures were gradually stained with moisture and turned into a rotten pile of waste in the soil. It's a pity that piles of treasures disappeared like this. But there is an exception, which was buried in the abyss for more than 2,000 years, but it has not changed its original appearance. It has conquered time. It is the sword of Gojian. Gojian, reigned 496 to 465 BC, was the king of the kingdom of Yu near the end of the spring and autumn period. What is even more shocking is that from this sword, scientists discovered the secret of making chips. Really? The sword more than 2,000 years ago actually contains chip-making technology. What is going on? Hi. Welcome to TechTeller. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel. As for today's video, let's uncover the secret of the sword of Gojian that has buried for thousands of years. In 1965, the Chinese scientific and archaeological team organized a large number of construction workers to build a canal-like tunnel next to Wangshan Mountain in Hubei. Watching the tunnels continue to move forward, the scientific research team has a hunch that there must be a large tomb here. The truth is as they expected, under the excavation of the construction team, a total of 55 tombs have been rediscovered one after another. At the same time, most of these tombs also adopted the usual method of sealing the tombs of the Chu royal family. For example, the quicksand tomb that terrified tomb robbers, but here, there is another way of sealing the tomb, which has attracted the attention of experts. Because this tomb is the largest of all the tombs, it was named Wangshan No. 1. This tomb adopts the extremely rare fire pit sealing method. This is a more advanced and fierce anti-theft method. To put it simply, the perimeter of the tomb is sealed with charcoal and green plaster mud. The green plaster mud is a material with excellent sealing properties, which makes the inside of the tomb produce a reaction similar to fermentation, thereby producing flammable gas. If there are tomb robbers digging, once they dig out the green paste mud on the periphery, the flammable gas will spurt out in an instant. When they encounter a torch, deflagration and explosion will occur, causing great damage to the digger. However, fortunately, the green paste mud of Wangshan No. 1 collapsed, and the flammable gas had leaked out. In this way, the scientific research team easily entered the tomb. After some protective excavation, a pair of swords attracted everyone's attention. After wiping off the surface soil, the expert was stunned on the spot. It turned out that this was actually a pair of male and female swords engraved with bird characters. It should be noted that in the spring and autumn period, the bird characters were only reserved for the royal family. The pair of swords were soon sent to the laboratory. After several experts deciphering, everyone agreed that what was written in bird characters on the sword was Gojian, the king of Yu. The experts present had not recovered from the shock, and soon, they discovered an even more strange thing. First of all, this pair of swords has been in the tomb for thousands of years, but they have not decayed, not even rust, as if they were brand new. Moreover, it also maintained a rather sharp blade. According to the records of historical documents, all the swords produced in Wu and Yu Kingdom can cut cattle and horses with one sword, bronze plates with one swing, wooden pillars in the house and large stones with two swords. Therefore, this pair of male and female swords, in theory, also have these characteristics. Experts have also made a special test. In fact, the two newly unearthed swords can cut through 23 layers of carbon paper with one knife. This kind of sharpness has surpassed countless modern swords, not to mention they are the ancient swords that have been buried for thousands of years. They are marvels of ancient craftsmanship. So, what kind of material is the two swords made of, and how can it have such magical properties? Faced with this problem, a group of archaeological experts began to investigate the two swords. They first detected the composition of the sword. 
Under the detection of the most advanced particle accelerator, the chemical composition of the sword of Gojian was quickly revealed in front of the scientific research team. It is the copper tin alloy, also known as bronze. However, the copper tin alloy of the sword of Gojian is particularly special, because there is no plumbum in the alloy of the two swords. Moreover, the distribution of copper and tin on the two swords is also very special, that is, the blade of the sword is composed of tin, and the ridge of the sword is composed of copper, which shocked everyone present. Experts immediately conducted an in-depth study of the cross-section of the blade, only to discover that the craftsman had forged the blade and the spine separately. That is to say, the sword ridge is first cast with copper water with high copper content, and then the blade is cast on the outside of the sword ridge with copper water with high tin content, which creates such a pure bronze sword. However, what is even more shocking is that the swords are not only sharp, but also has advanced technology on the surface of the blade. Because there are some regular diamond-shaped dark grids on the surface of the sword's body, which makes the whole sword look a bit mysterious. According to the scientists' research, the tin content in these plaids is extremely high. As a result, a group of historians thought of a lost craft, the sword body casting craft. According to the lattice distribution of the two swords, this should be a casting process called tin-rich fine-grained surface technology. After all, on these two swords, experts saw dendrites of metallic tin, which is in line with the characteristics of rich tin and fine crystals. This process has another general name in modern times, that is, crystal growth. Crystal growing is a modern technology with a strong sense of technology. Generally speaking, it is to melt the material into a molten soup, and then put the single crystal seed on the molten soup. After that, the seed crystal and the molten soup-like material will appear, symbiosis, at the critical point of solid liquid, that is, the seed crystal will extend with the extension of the molten soup, and after the molten soup solidifies, the seed crystal will also follow stereotypes. It is worth mentioning that this process is now being used in the production of chips. Simply put, if you can master this technology, you can realize the production of chip raw materials. This made the experts even more shocked. The sword of Gojian was produced more than 2,000 years ago. How did the craftsman master this craft? Unfortunately, this question is still a mystery. Maybe in the near future, there will be new ancient books to answer this question, let us wait and see. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. See you.